Hi, I'm Brian Tima, one of the pastors here at Grace Spring Bible Church. Our prayer is that God use this as an incredible resource to align your heart with His. We know that you're not always able to plug into a local church, but we highly encourage that. Yet we are grateful to be able to offer this resource to you. And if you find that you've been ministered greatly by something that the Ministry of Grace Spring has been doing, feel free to check out our website in ways that you might be able to serve or give. Now let's prepare to hear the Word of God proclaimed. Well, good morning, everyone. How are we today? Today we have an exciting service. My name is Sarah Norton. I'm the children's director here, and I have the privilege of opening up our family Sunday service. That's right. Today we want to make sure that all ages know that they are a part of one body. So today we're going to be embracing everyone and the roles that we hold. But first, we have to get into God's Word. Do you agree? All right, so I have a friend here with me. What's your name? Porter. Porter. How old are you, Porter? Three. Do you have a memory verse to share with us today? Yes. Can you do that? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. John 3, 30. He must increase. I must decrease. That's right. Good job. High five, Porter. Well done, Porter. Now, let's get this party started. Participation is mandatory, so let's everyone stand up and join our GS Kids worship team as they lead us in a time of praise.
To think about the goodness of the Lord He gives me everything I need and so much more So I just want to lift my hands And say that I love Him I just want to lift my heart in praise And I want to be faithful I want to be faithful I want to remember everything That the Lord has To think about the goodness of the Lord He gives me everything I need and so much more So I just want to lift my hands And say that I love Him I just want to lift my heart in job you guys well done stay right here all right at this time I'm going to ask Riker my friend Riker to come up and Ellie to come forward Leia you may go ahead and start your team off the stage come on up Riker let's give him a round of applause one more time all right now I think I already said your name but can you tell everyone what your name is Riker and what's your name Ellie and Riker how old are you four Five. Five. Okay. He's five. Just kidding. Okay. Good job. And Ellie? Seven. Seven. And do you guys have a memory verse to share with us today? Mm -hmm. Okay. Are you guys ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. I know the, the plans, plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Jeremiah 29, 11. Great job. Great job. All right, go off stage. That's awesome. So you guys are going to hear some of our GS kids reciting some of the memory verses that they've been learning in this last year. 
You know, a couple weeks ago, we had a chance, our team had a chance to ask some of you what you guys thought you could learn from another generation. Check it out. My dad taught me how to ride a bike with no training wheels. I think about the stability and the faithfulness of older Christians. Um, you know, we're, we're in our mid-40s now and are coming alongside uh, folks who are 10 to 20 years younger than us in their journey. I think, what do I have to give to them? And when I think, kind of go, well, who's 10 to 20 years older than me? And I, and I see who uh, those folks are in our church. Like, yeah, this is stability. This is faithfulness. This is what the younger generation needs. I think one thing when I think about the younger generations that I appreciate now as in middle age is the enthusiasm because I realize as we go through life, huh, we get tired. And I guess something that I've learned from older generations, whether it's parents or grandparents um, or people outside of the family, um, there's people out there that just have a whole lot of wisdom um, and a bunch of life experiences. I think it's important to have older generations in our life because if we didn't, then we would probably make a lot more mistakes than we already do. Having that role model of just life is tough, but you you push through and you cling to, to Jesus, and and Pursue. He's your yeah He's your provider and He gets you through it. And for the younger generations, I think they're uh, they're great. They keep you young. They keep you uh, wild at heart, mm -hmm. sort of. And um, yeah, they bring joy like nobody else can. God's given me the desire to be with children, and it just challenges me when they ask questions like, does God have gray hair? How do you answer something like that? We as older generation need to leave our young children see that we are the salt of the earth, and if we don't teach them, the world will. I love my teacher. And I learned from her that um, God loves me. God loves me. And now I know he really does. She teaches me how to remember the verses. My mom taught me um, the song, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. And I still, still repeat that those lyrics a lot. I absolutely love how younger children just are so, they believe in everything and um, whenever you talk to them about the Bible, they just are so excited and just want to learn more about it. The way they interpret scripture from their life lessons um, in times of, of hardships, in times of good things, um, and, and Following blindly, I think, I think is the biggest thing that we can learn from the older generations. Awesome. <laughs> well, welcome to Grace Spring Bible Church. Uh, my name is Kenneth Price. I'm one of the pastors here. I want to say uh, thank you so much for joining us this morning. And I want to say thank you for embracing uh, this Sunday morning that looks a little bit different. But man, what a joy to be led in worship by our kids. Yeah? I, uh, I couldn't help. I was standing over here and just watching you guys engaging. Like, that was super cool seeing, like, you know, Bob Pike doing some dance moves. That was awesome. <laughs> Love you, Bob. <laughs> uh, so, man, uh, we had a vision uh, early this summer that as we kind of rounded out the, the portion of the summer about the gospel, that we really wanted to look at how the gospel impacts our family of faith. And so uh, you, you might have heard me say this before, but we believe that the gospel, it, it, it's the good news of Jesus Christ, that while we were dead in our sins, that God sent his son Jesus, fully God and fully man, to live a perfect life, to die the death that we deserve, uh, to raise from the grave three days later. And uh, in doing so, uh, there's a very specific passage of scripture that tells us that God has made us sons and daughters of God when we believe. So I don't know what that means to you, but to me, that sounds like we're all brothers and sisters here, right? 
And so what we wanted to focus on very specifically this morning, uh, we're going to have kind of two broken up teaching times, but we're focusing on the idea that we're all one big gospel family. Okay, and so if you don't like uh, multi-generational ministry, I understand there's some things that, that, you know, your heart is drawn to, but, but we are, I mean, look around you at the beauty that is in this room right now. We have, uh, we have small kids, we have teenagers, we have adults, we have uh, older adults. <laughs> <laughs> we, you know, we have folks who are married, folks who are single, folks who are divorced, uh, folks who are widowed. I mean, this is the beauty of the body of faith that wherever you are in life, there is a place for you here. And you have a very specific calling and something to do within this body of faith. And so the message I have for us this morning is, you know, whether you're 2 or 92, God has a purpose for you in this place, and he wants you to be stepping out in that and following him in that. And so before we kind of jump into the message, you know, we, we hit kind of some of the younger ones. Um, and I know, like, we've, we've had our uh, youth interns up here to, to help with the countdown. They're coming back in a little bit for a very uh, secret surprise that's coming up. Um, some of you know, Yeah. Just wait. <laughs> it's going to be good. But uh, I, I thought, like, you know, for us uh, a little bit older who are maybe, you know, a little text message averse, that we play a little bit of a game. How does that sound? Yeah? yeah? All right. So what we're going to do is I am going to um, I'm gonna put up a story, uh, a summer term that is told through emojis. And what I need you to do is when you think you know what, it's, what the, the phrase is, I need you to yell it out, okay? Do you think we could do that? There's four of them. We're going to see how good you are, all right? You ready? All right. Whoa, I heard it. Sunscreen. All right, teenagers, you got to sit this one out. We're going uh, <laughs> to, I heard it over there. <laughs> I got you, Stephanie. <laughs> All right, you ready for the next one? All right. Should we see what it is? Summer camp. You were all around it. It's all good. <laughs> all right, two more. How about this one? Ooh, Stephanie got it. Are you three for three? <laughs> Lemonade stand. That's awesome. Man, some of you need to brush up on your emojis. If you text these young people and don't have an emoji game, you're going to be in trouble. All right, what about this one? Backyard barbecue, my favorite. We got it. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, guys. All right, so what I want to do for the next few minutes, and then um, we're going to bring up someone else to, to tell us some verses, and we're going to watch the second part of that awesome video, and then I'll come back and finish kind of the teaching. But I want to ask this question. I want you to really think about this with your imagination, is how does the gospel of Jesus Christ shape our community? How does the gospel of Jesus Christ shape our community? And so the, the lens that I want to look at here is if we believe this is good news for us, and if we're preaching the gospel to ourselves daily, what does that mean to take the responsibility and, and to use the gifts that we have to take that same gospel into uh, the different generations? So for the older folks, what does it mean to, to take the life experience that you have and to say, you know what, like... God has brought me through a lot. And, and what I know about some of the older generation here at Grace Spring is there is this vast humility that I see in this age group. That I, I know sometimes there have been times that, that we've talked about mentoring, and it's like I don't understand why a younger person would even want me to speak into their lives. And then I talk to the younger generation, and they're aching for that. So what does it look like for the older generation to, to wrap their arms around this younger generation and to give them the wisdom that they have 
And then what does it look for the younger generation to not only learn from them, but, but to teach them some of the exciting things that are going on in their lives as well? One of the things that I was adamant about when we were planning this service out was that I wanted our young ones who have been hiding God's word in their hearts to come up here and show you exactly what God has been doing in their lives through the ministry of GS Kids. I think it's amazing. You see little Porter up here, and he's got God's word hidden in his heart, and we can all learn from that, right? I can't tell you. I mean, when I was a kid, I was memorizing scripture left and right. When I'm an adult, like, that's on my to-do list, right? Yeah, we can learn that from our kids. What does it look for our teenagers to show us what it means to be fun and goofy again? You know? My hope was that as we came in here that we would laugh, that we would find joy in this place. So I'm going to read just a brief passage of scripture here. And I think this is the gospel imagination that I want us to have for each other. So as I read this passage, what I want to encourage you to do is to think through the different generations. Think about your spheres of influence. Think about the different people that are represented across this body sitting in these chairs and, and the, the place that you might have in either discipling them or being discipled by them. But, but most of all, this passage is about our hearts and our attitudes and how the gospel of Jesus Christ changes us so that we're not looking at ourselves anymore, but looking at the world around us, okay? So this is in Ephesians 2. I'm going to go ahead and read this. If, if you'd like to stand, you can go ahead and do so. I know that I see like very cramped seats, so whatever you want to do is fine with me. Everything's different this morning, so it's all good. All right, so this is in Ephesians 2. This is what it says. So if there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any part uh, participation in the Spirit, any uh, affection and sympathy, so if there are any of those things, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind, do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Having this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant." Being born in the likeness of men and being found in human form, he humbled himself by coming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. This is the word of the Lord. You guys can have a seat. So what I want us to look at here is, is these very intentional words that Paul gave us. And, and very much the, the things I want us to focus on is, is very specific commands from Paul. He told us to stop thinking about ourselves. <laughs> I can't tell you, like, and I don't want to guilt anybody. I can't tell you how many times I, I've heard, like, things that, like, go along the lines of, yeah, I, I know you need help in that ministry, but, you know, like, that's really not what I'm passionate about. Yeah, I know. <laughs> right? I, I totally understand it. But what I love about this call from Paul is, is he's saying it's not about you anyway. It's not about what you're passionate about. We have a mandate from the Lord as sons and daughters of God to think more highly of others than we think of ourselves. And so as we think about that, it might be like, yeah, this family service is a little bit uncomfortable. It's a little bit more noisy. I'm not used to all these kids being in here. I think it's awesome. Because they are the future of this church. And if we, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shoot straight with you, and then I'm going to shut up for a minute. But here's the, if we don't train them up right, and if, if we don't come alongside them, and you adults, if you don't use your gifts to pour into them and teach them the foundations of this faith, who knows what this church will look like when they're old enough to take it over. Do we want to be a thriving church that continues to reach the area around us for Jesus Christ? Yeah? We've got to think more highly of others than we think of ourselves. So the gifts that God's given us, he's asked us to pour those out into the people around us. 
And as the younger generation, it's up to me to receive. I, I can call myself younger generation, right? So, although, like, L Laney, I think, gave me a gray patch, like, right here. <laughs> it's getting rough. So I want you to kind of stew on that for a minute and think about that, what it looks like to use your gifts wherever you are, however old you are, to build up the other generations. Right now, I'd like to uh, invite uh, the Coon sisters. They're going to come up and uh, tell us some scripture. What's up? <laughs> Woo! All right. Do you think you could tell me your name and how old you are? I'm Esther, and I'm seven years old. All right, and you? I'm Nora, and I'm eight years old. Esther and Nora. All right, do you have some scripture that you'd like to share with us? All right, here we go. You ready? For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. John 3, 16. Yeah, great job, girls. Thank you so much. Thank you. That was awesome. All right, now I want to encourage you to watch the rest of this video. I think for me, um, I get from my mom that family is important and faith is important. My mom and my grandma, they've taught me that I don't have to fit into the crowd. We can all be different and unique. And like for my generation, we, we've learned to like accept each other however we are. My parents are so helpful. They help you a lot with stuff like if you too short to reach something, they can help you with that. They can help you with like, if you're sad or down or something and you just need someone to talk to. Something I learned from the older generation is they really have their priorities figured out and I hope to someday just aspire to, to figure out what matters most and to really focus on, on that. Something I learned from the younger generation is to kind of look at things through a new perspective. Everything they see is new and exciting to them. Something I learned from my kids is how to say I'm sorry and how to ask for forgiveness. It's very humbling. So we have a song that we sometimes sing. Uh, my wife and I and our four kids, I've got my two boys here, Wesley and Micah, and we have a song that sometimes, you know, we struggle with being kind to each other, even mom and dad sometimes, and, and the siblings. So we have a song that we have taught our kids, uh, a couple different ones, but this is one specifically when we're having a hard time being kind to each other. Be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God Christ has forgiven, forgiven you, do, do, doodly do, the visions for 32. Something important about my Grammy is um, when she was having hard times, um, she taught me that believe in Jesus even when it's hard to. I learned to work hard and never give up for my grandpa. My grandparents teach me how to be nice. What I've learned from my grandchildren is patience. I love having like grandparents and parents because they teach me so much about what I haven't learned and what I can learn about things that they haven't learned and they learn a lot of stuff from me about technology. I always help them. They never cease to amaze you and they are listening to each and everything you do and watching how you handle things and how you react to things and I've learned from my grandparents I've learned that always following Christ pays off no matter what. So I think every generation, old and new, can teach us something. I'm continually learning from all of them. I agree. Oh, okay. Dude, ever since they previewed that video for us, like, I don't know, a week and a half ago, we have been singing that song all around the office. Good job, Mary. Do, do, doodly do. <laughs> it's so good. I love it. <laughs> oh, man. So what I want to encourage you with um, is, is simply this. You know, Paul wrote here in Philippians, let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also the interests of others. 
He said, have this in mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And so my big, my big question in the midst of this family service, it's really simple. What does it look like to serve the generation older than you? What does it look like to serve the generations younger than you? For our kids, what does it look like to serve your parents, to serve your grandparents, to serve uh, your teachers here at church? What does it look like to love them well? What does it look like to keep doing things like that and reading scripture and, and pouring yourselves out for this body so that we can remember the, the, the zeal of life, the childlike faith, the wonder I need more of that in my life. For the older generation, what does it look like to get out of your comfort zone a little bit and say, you know what, I might not have all the answers, but I have walked through a lot. And if you have questions, um, if, if I can teach you how to balance a checkbook, I'm kidding. <laughs> then you could teach me how to open a PDF. <laughs> what it, what, uh, but, but what I really want you to consider is, is these things, okay? And then, and then we're going to kind of move on with our service. But here, here are our gospel responses. This is how I, th these are the filters that I want you to think about as you're thinking about how to serve others. I, I pulled these out of the heart of what Paul was writing. But number one, humility. What does it look like to say, you know what? I don't have all the answers, but what God has given me, I can offer. That's what humility really is, is, is to say, like, I don't think highly of myself. I'm thinking of the world around me. The second is patience. What does it look like to, to slow down, to breathe a little bit more, to say, you know what, like, this might rile me up. Maybe, you know, the three-year-old room is not my sweet spot. But if you need a body, man, I'd be happy to be in there once a month. What does it look like to be more curious? You know, I, I am amazed by, by the walls that can be broken down if you just stop and ask people questions. What is your name? How old are you? What's your favorite dinosaur? <laughs> I, was, uh, I was spending some time with uh, a youth pastor friend of mine just kind of helping him with a conference this last weekend, and like that was my go-to. It was like, what's your favorite dinosaur? And you would be amazed, the 10-minute conversations that would come out of that one question. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. So let's be curious. Let's be people who don't just take the surface level, but dig deeper. And the fourth is servanthood. Paul talked about that. Jesus, even though he was God, didn't think that that was something that, that could hold him back from being the servant uh, of man. So as you think about this, kids... Teenagers, adults, older adults, I want to ask you to consider what is it in this place, in this building, in the community around you, through humility, through patience, through curiosity, and through servanthood that you have to offer the other generations? And I want to leave you with that. I want you to, I want you to stew on that. I don't want you to go and nap this afternoon and then forget about it. But my encouragement would be that, that through seeing these kids and through seeing our youth and through seeing all of the generations coming together to worship God together, that maybe, just maybe, the Holy Spirit would stir something in your heart and that he would show you a pathway for you to use the gifts and talents in humility, in patience, in curiosity, and in servanthood to build up the body of Christ right where you're at. So what I'd like to do for just a moment is I would like to pray over kind of each generation. Um, and we kind of broken up a little generally because I don't have time to do like actually every generation. But what, I, what I'd like to do is we're just going to take time as a church body. I would encourage you to say your own prayers as I'm praying this. But I truly believe that every single person that's in this place, every single chair that's being taken up, every single um, login that's happening on our online service, you have a part to play 
in building the body of faith right here in this building. And if you're not plugged in, like I said, this is never guilt or shame, but, but I really want you to consider what's the thing you can do? What is the one thing that you can do? So let's pray. First of all, I'm going to pray for our kids. Heavenly Father, as, um, as a father of two little ones myself, um, I pray for the children of this church. Um, and if you're near a child, um, I would encourage you to, to pray for them specifically. Heavenly Father, I pray um, that, that you would help this body of believers as a village to raise up these children in the way that they should go so that when they're older, they will not depart from it. That's a, that's a truth straight from your scripture. Lord, I believe that you have blessed this body because of the faith of our kids' ministry. I believe that you have blessed this body because of the zeal and the earnestness and the excitement that, that just exists in this younger generation. Lord, I pray that we would be slow so that we could see the beauty that they bring to the table. Lord, I, I pray that we wouldn't just hear the screeches and the howls and the hollers, but we would see the heart. Lord, and if we're prone to, to not pay attention, Lord, I pray that you, with your Holy Spirit eyes, would help us to see the beauty in each and every one of these beautiful gifts that you have given us to be a part of our body. Lord, they are your sons and, their, and daughters. Lord, they are our brothers and sisters, and they have so much to offer to this family. And I, I pray that we would be slow and that we would be quick to see the beauty that they bring to this place. Heavenly Father, I, I lift up our youth. Lord, you know that this is an area that, that I am passionate about, Lord. I believe that um, the youth, as they leave youth group and, and move into um, college and, and into adulthood, Lord, that these are such formative years. And Heavenly Father, I pray that our youth that they would know you deeply, that their faith would be sticky, that your Holy Spirit would, would teach them what it means to be a disciple, what it means to evangelize, what it means uh, to go into the world around them. Lord, I believe that, that this is such an area, it's such a time um, for growth. Lord, I pray that that would not be wasted inside of them. Lord, I pray that you would teach them what it means to fail safely within this body of believers. Lord, I thank you for the energy that they bring. I thank you for the words that I don't understand that they say that, <laughs> that helps me to be more sharp. Lord, I pray that, um, Lord, you would just continue to bless them and that they would bless us with their presence and with their gifts and with their energy and with their passion and the way that they love so deeply and the way they throw their interests and, and passions into the mix so that, so that we can see what it means to be yours. Lord, I pray for um, the next generation up. Lord, I pray for young families. Uh, Lord, whether, uh, whether single or married. Um, Lord, it's a stage that, that there's a lot of transition, a lot of things going on. Lord, for, for those who are single and who are, who are looking for um, a relationship or maybe those who aren't. Lord, I, I pray that, that you would show them what it means to honor you in their singleness. It, it's a beautiful gift. And we even see uh, Paul, your servant, who, who talks about the gift that, that singleness can be in that season. And so, Lord, I, I just pray um, that they would use that uh, to reach the world around them, to, to spend time dedicated in you, Lord, to grow and, and to, to flourish and to see the world around them changed uh, through the way that they're living life. And for those families who um, are married and, and maybe don't have kids, Lord, I, I pray that if that's something that they desire, that if that's something that's in your plan, Lord, that you would build the foundations right now for the life that they're building. And Heavenly Father, if it's something that they don't have planned, Lord, I pray that they would stand firm in that decision, knowing that you have called them to that. Lord, I believe that, that you have a plan for, for each of these paths. And Lord, I pray that they would stand firm in those knowing that you are at the heart of that. And Lord, I pray for, for families with kiddos, for parents who 
um, from, from birth all the way up. Lord, I, I just pray that you would help them to shepherd and guard their families well, that you would help them to teach uh, the, the ways of your word, Lord, that you would help them to be intentional, realizing that the primary ministry in their lives exists within their homes. Lord, I pray that, that you would build disciples out of these families, Lord. I pray for strong marriages, Heavenly Father. I believe that the enemy wants to attack marriages, and I, I see that in our body. And Lord, I, I just pray that, uh, Heavenly Father, that you would bind them together. Lord, we give you these young families, Lord. And, and I pray for um, the little bit older generation, the empty nesters and beyond, Lord, Heavenly Father, that you would encourage them to continue to use their life experience and their passion and, and the things that you have taught them to bless us, Lord. I know we desperately need it. I desperately need it, Father. I thank you for the wisdom that has been poured out into me by faithful men who weren't afraid to say, you know what, like I might not have it all figured out, but I think I have something you need to hear. Lord, I pray they wouldn't be timid, that they wouldn't think that uh, what they have to say is, is not valuable, but Lord, that they would stand firm in your giftings. And Lord, I, I just pray uh, Heavenly Father, that, that this age group, that, that it would flourish in this church, that um, it, it would be a, a plumb line even for this church that, that we can see where we can grow to in the faith. Heavenly Father, we hand every single situation, every single scenario to you. Any, anybody that's represented by any life stage in this place. And Lord, we thank you for this family of faith that you have called one body in unity to serve the body of Jesus Christ. And so I pray, Lord, that in humility, in patience, in curiosity, in servanthood, Heavenly Father, would you help us to love your body well? Use whatever gifts and talents we have to pour out into the body of faith. Lord, we hand that to you and we trust you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Now I want to encourage you. We have uh, some time. We've got some, some youth up here. We're going to sing a couple more songs. I want to encourage you to just get up, sing your hearts out, and then we've got a really special surprise after that's over. All right, kids, if you want to dance, feel free to come up in the front or come out in the aisles. This is like a party. Yahoo for parties. All right, here we go.
dawn will soon arrive. Can you feel it? Can you feel the winds are changing? There's a new day on the rise, and the atmosphere is breaking as a new world comes to life. Cause we will sing and we will dance till the earth that goes to heaven. So give praise till we see the other side.
You may have a seat. All right, can you tell me what your name is? Hope. Michael. And how old are you? Ten. Nine. All right, do you guys have a verse you'd like to share with us? Yes. Okay, here we go. Your, your kingdom, kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. kingdom. Your, your, your dominion endures throughout all generations. The Lord is faithful in all of his words and kind in all his works. Psalms 145, verse 13. Well done, you guys. Well done. Good job. Good job. All right, I'm going to ask my last friends to come up. We have one more man reverse. Are you guys enjoying yourself today? Yes. Our GS kids have a lot of energy. I get exercise every Sunday. Okay, are you guys ready? What's your name? Fiona. Brianna. And how old are you? Eleven. Nine. All right, you guys have something to share for us? Go ahead. In, In the, the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. John 1, verses 1 through 2. Awesome job, you guys. Thank you. Thank you. All right, now, I know some of you probably heard there was a secret something happening, and it is that time. So I have the privilege to tell you that we challenged our GS kids in a Bible reading challenge. Their challenge was if they could read collectively 5,000 minutes in 14 days, that Pastor Kenneth is getting slimed. Now, I just want to say, the kids don't know what they got yet. And I want to say, Pastor Kenneth, yeah. how, how are you feeling right now? Great. <laughs> kids, where are my kids at? All right, do you guys remember when Pastor Kenneth came down to large group and said, he doesn't think you can do it? You guys remember that? Okay. Well, do you guys think you did it? Yeah. The goal was to help them in daily spiritual habits, to form a daily spiritual habit. And I would like to say, can we get a drum roll? Here is our total. 5,317 minutes. So, boys and girls, you know what that means, right? Pastor yeah. Kenneth is getting slimed. Woo! Woo! That's right. Make sure you don't have your phones, any electronics, any of those things. Just one for right now. All right, boys and girls. Are you ready? Pastor Kenneth, I just want to say, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I appreciate your willingness to put something motivational for our children to get in the Word of God. And so for that, let me be the privileged one to slime you. Boys and girls, can we get a countdown from five? Great, but I have a little surprise. Do you need a towel? Uh, maybe in a minute. This is it's cold. Um, kids, I have a question. How many of you would like to see Miss Sarah get slimed? What? You wouldn't do me like that, would you? Yeah, you would. Yeah, you would. Okay. It's happening. It's happening. Let me see. Who wants me to get slimed? I'm taking numbers. I'm taking numbers. Let me see. Who else? Okay, okay. I see adults out there. What?
They very clearly will still be wedding appropriate. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think kids nowadays are actually like dipping their shoes in different colors to make them trendy and cool. So you're just one step ahead of the curve. So uh, thank you all for coming today. What a beautiful morning to celebrate the, the reality of as a united body of Christ. Uh, we are one and we represent Jesus um, so well in our communities. And so we'd love to invite you to stand as we uh, close in prayer today. Just as a reminder, if you haven't been giving faithfully to the Lord, um, just spend some time in prayer and see if that's something that he might want from you. I know that uh, depending on where you're at in life, that might seem like a, a real joy or a real kind of scary thing, but our encouragement is pray through those things and see what God's got for you. So would you join us? Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity to smile today. To find our great hope and our joy in you, Lord, is a gift unlike any other. Um, as I hear the sounds of Kenneth and the slime squishing between his toes, Lord, I know that you are delighted, not just that your kids had fun today, but that the word of God is being learned and proclaimed um, all over the world. So today, Lord, we pray for your um, kindness and favor to continue upon us as your children, and that we would do all things for your glory and your honor. And all of God's people said it with a great big smile on their face, amen. amen. Have a great week, everybody.